from the story of a Corsican soldier that became the Emperor of France, to his iconic image and passionate as well as often needy love life, the fame of Napoleon Bonaparte is undeniable. But what really lies under the surface of his legendary veneer? And what did he do that makes him so important? This is Napoleon Bonaparte, probably one of the only historical figures who we're still on first name terms with. Napoleon's legacy itself is a complicated one. While he was ridiculed continuously by the British press, he was deeply admired by contemporary intellectuals. While his enemies painted him as a warmonger, it's clear now that more wars were waged against him than those he brought against others. And while he was crowned the Emperor of France, he claimed himself to be a supporter of the ideals of the French Revolution, and he arguably laid the legal foundations for modern Europe. Napoleon's controversial legacy meant that even 200 years after his death, France was divided on paying homage to him. Now, before we start to understand Napoleon's significance and how he shaped the world today, we need to set the scene of France in the late 18th and early 19th century. The French Revolution marked the end of feudalism in France, kicking King Louis XVI and Marie Antoinette off the throne and establishing a republic. But although the revolution had put an end to constitutional monarchy and made a declaration of civil rights for citizens, this time in French history quickly became the stuff of nightmares. At the hands of the revolutionaries, a bloody political purge took hold. Anyone suspected of royalist links or being involved in counter-revolutionary activities were imprisoned and executed. It's thought that between 1793 and 1794, this period known as the Terror, claimed around 16 to 40,000 French lives, making this contraption one of the great symbols of the revolution. But this wasn't the newly established republic's only issue. Hyperinflation drove prices sky high, and food riots were common. Events which Napoleon himself said he feared more than battles. But the ideology of the Republic pushed the mob to new lows. They declared the revolution as ushering in the age of reason. A 10 day week based on the metric system was introduced and the celebration of Christian holidays such as Christmas were banned. And rather than the government focusing their efforts on peace within France, money was poured into the wars on its borders, which were under attack from European monarchies intent on ensuring the revolution didn't spread. This dire situation even caused leaders of the revolution to turn on each other culminating in the death of Robespierre at the guillotine. The French Revolution had created chaos within France, and this chaos was crying out for leadership. In Napoleon's own words, the pear was ripe for picking. The ideology of the revolution was one of meritocracy, and so it's fairly apt that a Corsican boy who didn't speak French could rise through the ranks to become the ruler of France by proving his skill on the battlefield. Born to an uninfluential noble family, when France took the island of Corsica, Napoleon became entitled to some privileges, including going to school in France, and, as it turned out, Napoleon was a bit of a boffin. A boffin for war. From his school days, Napoleon was obsessed with military tactics. Even later in life, Napoleon is said to have always taken his library with him on campaigns, studying military history and strategy, as well as taking notes on terrain and potential battlefields on his travels. His love of this art undoubtedly gave him the edge over his schoolmates. And after graduating, he got to put his knowledge to the test when he was commissioned to 
quash a royalist rebellion within Paris. In a move never seen before, Napoleon placed cannons within the streets of Paris and fired grape shot, bags of small shrapnel that caused incredible amounts of damage to a body, into the crowd of rebels. Two to three hundred royalists were killed and the rebellion was put to bed. His actions were shocking even at the time, but his effectiveness in such a chaotic moment meant he was quickly promoted and given the army of Italy. Though not one of the main fronts of France's current war against Austria, Napoleon turned it into one, and his victories with this army catapulted him into the limelight. Throughout his career, his military genius is understood as his most renowned quality, and was praised even by his enemies. When Wellington, who beat him at the Battle of Waterloo, was asked who was the greatest general of the day, he answered, in this age, in past ages, in any age, Napoleon. Napoleon would change the way war was waged for centuries to come. His tactics included dividing his army into corps, which could act independently if needed. He used infantry and cavalry alongside mobile artillery to divide and conquer. He focused on speed and mobility of the army by ensuring his soldiers lived off the land. And when in power, he used the strength of his empire to wage economic warfare against Britain with his continental system. But one of Napoleon's greatest skills was storytelling. Napoleon himself said, the art of the great captains has always been to make their forces appear to be very large to the enemy and to make the enemy view themselves to be very inferior. In order to shape the identity of France as a modern state of culture and science, Napoleon took to looting. Whilst on his Italian campaign, he took advice from academics on the finest Renaissance pieces to bring back to France. And on his return, he pitched another expedition, one that on paper was intended to hinder the British access to India, but in a triple whammy gave him access to some of the world's most exquisite treasures and would see him follow in the footsteps of his heroes, Julius Caesar and Alexander the Great. Given the green flag, Napoleon set off to invade Egypt. Now, although Napoleon managed an easy victory against the Egyptians, whose military capabilities were far inferior to the French at the time, and although the academics he took with him made many great discoveries, including unearthing the Rosetta Stone, Napoleon's expedition was far from perfect. After losing a battle on the Nile with the British, he made a string of decisions which have been widely condemned, including ordering a massacre of Turkish prisoners, poisoning his own soldiers who were suffering from plague, and eventually deserting his own army in order to return to France. But the stories he told on his return, along with the treasures he had collected, appeared to bring glory to the people of France, and he received a hero's welcome. He was so greatly admired, in fact, that he was able to form an alliance with these men and stage a successful coup d'etat. From the work he did on campaign to the iconography he used within his propaganda, Napoleon elevated France's reputation, as well as spreading Greco-Roman and Egyptian fashions across Europe. But his cultural legacy remains to this day. Paris remains a cultural capital, one that many visit to see the neoclassical architecture he patronized and the artifacts he stole. Even when Napoleon finally lost his throne, Louis XVIII stated, it must be allowed that Napoleon was a very good tenant. His support for the sciences was similarly impactful, sponsoring scientific expeditions and patronizing academics that have broadened our understanding of the world. Now, Napoleon clearly achieved historical feats, even as a simple general, but his actions once he rose to power are arguably more important. Though Napoleon consolidated power for himself and eventually crowned himself emperor, he claimed to be a supporter of the ideas of the Republic, claiming he knew what was needed to complete the revolution. His vision for France 
was to establish a final and permanent system, a vision he thought that could not be achieved within a system of shared power. Within his first few weeks as First Consul of France, his achievements were staggering. He concluded the French Revolution, saw off his co-conspirators, set up a Senate, a Tribunate, the Banque de France, made peace offerings to Britain and Austria, and the confidence in his new leadership meant that the French franc bounced back. But perhaps for Napoleon's most important legacy as ruler is the legal code he created, known as the Napoleonic Code. The code prioritised clear, accessible laws, emphasised equality before the law, the sanctity of property, and separated church and state. This code inspired legal systems across the world and marked a turning point in modern governance. However, when examined under the light of modern democracy, Napoleon is far from ideal. He chose to restrict women's rights in France, as well as reinstate slavery in French colonies, and reintroduce legal penalties of death and confiscation of property. Throughout his reign, Napoleon continued to grow the French Empire, and what he achieved is responsible for significantly altering the political landscape of Europe, contributing to the rise of nationalism and the unification of Germany and Italy. It's unlikely that a leader without such a strong stomach could have achieved what Napoleon did. Be he a visionary, hero or tyrant, his legacy is complex and controversial, but one thing is clear, his story is a testament to the impact one individual can have. An impact that makes Napoleon so important. If you're interested in reading more about Napoleon and his life, I'll leave some links to books in the description below. Thanks so much for watching and make sure to subscribe for more.